Brad Perry here again from Brad Sound Company. We're in Darwin in the north of Australia. Today we're going to have a look at some of our digital consoles, our stage box and iPads and see how they all work together. So first of all, our digital consoles is the Soundcraft SI Expression, Expression 3 here which is 32 channel, 16 output. And the little guy over here, Expression 1, that's 16 input and 16 output. Over here, Soundcraft Digital Stage Box, Mini Stage Box 32. 32 in, 16 out. Now the connection between the stage box and the consoles. Ethernet cable, Cat5 cable to either console. Now the stage box contains the preamps, very, very high grade preamps, the same as what's used on the VI series, the top of the range soundcraft. Now, one of the consoles only can control the preamp gain, and that's simply determined by whichever console is turned on first. So, uh, we have a look now at some of the features of the console. We'll have a look now on the uh, big guy over here. We'll go right down to the channel 1, we'll select channel 1, hit the select button, then we come over here and all this section of the console controls the channel which you've selected. In this case up here we have the input meters, we have 48 volt or phantom power, we have uh, polarity or phase reverse there, we have our gain, high pass frequencies and then we go over to the gates We've got all the parameters of setting the gates for the channel and over here compressors again with all the parameters over here parametric EQs four bands the highs and the lows are shelving then we got mid high mid low mid and the bandwidth over here or the Q and over here we have delay, you can have individual delays per channel and then you can pan to the left or right and then down here the buttons, you can send the mix or send the channel sorry, to either left, right or the mono or you can turn them off and send them to the subgroup. Now we have a look at how we set up an auxiliary mix or mono the mix. We'll start off with mix one and you'll see the faders all change to yellow called fader glow. <coughs> Each function of the faders has a different colour and allows you instantly to know what you're mixing. Uh, so to set up a, uh, an auxiliary mix, in this case mix one, you select the channels you want to send to the mix and then you adjust, adjust how much you want to send to the mix. Of course there's your main over there. On or off the uh, main we go to auxiliary 2. Again very much the same. Auxiliary 3 right through the auxiliaries. Until we come up to auxiliary 11 on this console which we've uh, set as a subgroup. which the subgroups of course are uh, post-fade and now you'll see the faded glows turn to green so any mix with a green colour you're looking at post-fade mix again over here another subgroup for the vocals and that's the way we can tell exactly what we're mixing to the colours now we have a look now at effects. As you can see the, the colours all now change to a light blue or cyan. Any uh, faders you see on that colour, you're mixing effects. So there's a, actually four effects engines on these consoles, lexicon effects, and they work very very well. The masters of course over here. Now we're going to have a look how the actual
actual uh, effects work. So we'll press this button here to bring up the effects screen. Okay, we can see there we have uh, the four effects engines. In the top one there, you see we've selected small hall. We can have up to 29 choices of effects we can put on any of the uh, any of the uh, effects engines. We'll leave this one on the small hall. Then you go down to the bottom of the page there and you can adjust all the parameters. In this one case, starting off with pre-delay, we can adjust the pre-delay there to suit. Then we go to the next one. You see we've got a tape delay there. Again, down the bottom, all the parameters. And you can see we've got the tap here. We can we can tap there and you see the delay time changing as you, as you tap to the beat of the music. That will set your delay time. And we've got modulated delay set there. And we've got a chorus which is quite handy for acoustic guitars and other instruments. And again, all the parameters down the bottom. Well, we've had a look at what we can do with most of the inputs of this console. Let's have a look what we do with the outputs now. As I said, the 16 outputs, and we'll have a look first of all at the main output. We select, and now whatever we have up here, if you want to use the compressor on the, on the left, right, main outs, or you want to use the power metric EQ, they're there to be used. And probably more importantly, the graphic equaliser. Every bus, the 16 buses on these consoles, each have a graphic EQ. And that's selected there. You can see when you have a red fader glow, we're looking at graphic EQ. In this case, this is the lower 16 frequencies. And then we click that button, button and this is the upper 16 frequencies. The reason they do that, of course, if you come over to the smaller console, which has only got 16 channels, there's the lower half. There's the upper half, so they've just transplanted that system to the larger console. Now, we can go to the mono, which we often use for subwoofers. Again, there, you can adjust anything there, anywhere you like. And that, that looks after the uh, mono out. We go to a... Uh, Auxiliary mix again, the lower half and the upper half, and every bus on both of these consoles. Okay, one very handy item we use for these consoles is the iPad 2, used for remote control. That's very, very handy, particularly if you have a, a console set alongside the stage, you can go out to the audience area and mix, or very handy if you want to set monitor mixes up on the stage. Uh, these guys could do pretty well anything the console can do remotely, so we'll give you a, a bit of an idea. At the moment we're on mix one, you can see the yellow fader glow, you can see the yellow fader glow here, and you'll see how we can remove the faders, bring channels in, and that can be done up on the stage or anywhere in the venue for that matter. And we want to set the EQ, tune the monitors as we go. So we'll bring this one onto EQ. So there's a lower EQ there on mix one. And you can see how we can adjust. Just any band we want on the graphic EQ. Many other things we can do with this. We can uh, set it back up on the channels. You can see the channels all named there, all the drum names. And we can go into each channel now and we can set the parametric EQs, do whatever we want setting uh, parametric EQs all in quite large screen. We can adjust the gains, 
simply with a dial there of each of each part of the EQ. You can set the gain or attenuation of each frequency. We can set the uh, we can set the bandwidth. All done with a wheel. We can go down to there and we can set the frequency we want. Do it like that, or you can simply do it by moving your hand. But that can be done on every channel, every bus with the with the parametric EQ. Very very handy piece of equipment. Okay, so we've had a little quick tour of our consoles. We really enjoy using some of this modern equipment, and combined with our new QSC loudspeakers and our older. PVQW1 gear, crown amplifiers. We're really, really enjoying our work and we're producing some very good sound from Brad Sound Company. So, Brad Perry for now. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.